who would have been your favorite player from an outsider? You didn't coach them. Obviously, Rod Strickland was one of my favorites. Who would have been your favorite player to watch as a fan while you were coaching? Allen Iverson. I mean, I, I got to tell you, like, you know, that when I was an assistant, Patrick Ewing was playing at Georgetown. Now, Patrick Ewing was a dominant player dominant college player but he wasn't nearly the player that offensive player in college that he was in the pros he was a dominant defensive player in college which people don't even realize but Allen Iverson not only was the most fun to watch he was the most talented and I, I'll tell you a funny story now we and we we played them twice a year now he was he was there so I played I played against him five times twice during the regular season two years and then once in the Big East tournament and I remember we would have, you know, scouting report naturally, and we're getting ready to go out for the game. And Alvin Williams was playing for me then, who was a pretty good player, played in the NBA for 10 years. And I'm telling the team, I say, Al, now listen, here's what you got to do with Allen Iverson. You got to do this, this, and this, okay? And now go. And they were going out for the game. I turned to my assistant and said, pray that guy misses. <laughs> because <laughs> all that other stuff that you told out, Alvin Williams wasn't going to do anything. Alvin, that, that was Allen Iverson. You couldn't stop him. You just hope he missed. I had the uh, – well, it was a pleasure in one regards because you get to play against the best players in the world. But I also had the misery of guarding him on multiple occasions. <laughs> and you're right. You know what the scouting report is. If he goes right, he's going to go to the rim. But he's got that unbelievable running a hook floater going <laughs> right. And if he wants to shoot it from 12 feet, he'll shoot it from 12. If he can get all the way to the rim, he's getting to the rack. If he's going left, it's a pull-up jumper. Sometimes it's off a step back. So you know the scouting report, but he was so quick. His handle was so good, and he was so crisp with his, his footwork that you couldn't stop it. It was unbelievable. I couldn't imagine having a game plan like you did for him. <laughs> oh, well, you know, one, we, we, we actually, one of our games, we played him in the spectrum. We were both in the top ten that year, and uh, the place is sold out. And uh, the first – so – we had a regular – we had two game plans for that game. Start out the game, he's got like nine points in the first, you know, six minutes. I said, that's it. We go box in one, he scored three points the rest of the game. And I just had one guy, Howard Brown, who was a good player for me. I said, here's what you're going to do. You see, you're going to be in his face from that baseline to that baseline. He goes, well, what about it? Am I supposed to, you know, be see the ball? No, no, you don't see the ball, don't see nothing. Your job is just one thing. Don't let him touch the ball. You don't even care where the ball is. You don't care where the basket is. You just don't let this guy touch the ball. And he, he got a little frustrated when they're winning that. But the real story is we played Georgetown two weeks later. He had 35 on us down at their place. So there you go. You kind of set yourself up, I think, for that one. <laughs> yeah, oh, no doubt. <laughs> you, you ticked them off, woke up the sleeping bear for a couple weeks later. 